Viewers, welcome back to Dukoscopy TV. Well, today we are going to have a look at commodity currencies, and I am joined by Chloe Kuz Dunon, commodity strategist at PKNC. So, welcome today. Thank you for inviting me. Hello. So if you first of all look at the Australian dollar, the Reserve Bank of Australia left interest rates at 3% last week. Now many do expect them to cut later this year. Um, also in terms of the Australian dollar, it um, actually fell against the US dollar today due to renewed concerns for the Eurozone. Now what are you expecting to see in terms of the, U in terms of the Aussie dollar against its counterparts and of course, what are you expecting to see from the RBA this year? Um, I guess they will indeed uh, probably need another interest rate cut uh, this year because um, uh, Australia is not in a bad health but it still needs uh, some, some more uh, easing conditions for the economy to properly uh, uh, continue its expansion. Uh, the RBA has already uh, been considering the end of the commodities boom. It is true that since uh, 2008 after the crisis actually the manufacturing sector uh, collapsed and has difficulties uh, uh, picking up again uh, since then which is which could portend to the beginning of a Dutch disease actually so um, yes it is most likely that they will need no, uh, one but I guess it is um, it is highly data de dependent and by that I mean not uh, domestic not so much domestic but rather foreign data dependent because if you imagine and indeed if China happens to to grow faster than expected they will probably not need an, another interest rate cut if there's a positive momentum coming back uh, from, from China. If you look back, we are, at, uh, we are currently at 3% interest rate uh, um, in Australia, which is actually the low uh, um, of uh, the post-Lehman uh, post crisis. So the RBA will take its time to carefully assess the situation um, that is so that it, it's not uh, obliged like in, uh, in 2009, uh, six months after the late latest uh, uh, interest rate cut to hike again because the economy is actually expanding faster than we were expecting. Uh, in terms of news for the Australian dollar, I guess the downside is limited because uh, the interest rate cut is, uh, I guess, partly or already completely in the consensus. Um, now, uh, if they do not, in the first half of the year, cut the interest rate, that's where things will get interesting because that will not be expected by markets, which should give a positive boost to the Australian dollar. Now, um, on the medium term, on the short to medium term, um, it remains an interesting carry trade, the Australian dollar. So I do not think that it, it will uh, really, uh, its momentum will drastically uh, uh, fade. Um, and if the global industrial cycle picks up, it will definitely be uh, positive for the, for the Aussie. And now if we look at the New Zealand dollar, in Asia trading, it was actually trading at a two-year high. Now, many expect the central bank in New Zealand not to do anything in terms of interest rates in the near term. Now, what are you expecting to see? It's... Um no, well, uh, New Zealand, uh, the RBNZ uh, probably really does need to uh, uh, decrease interest rates, that's for sure. Now, will they need an increase? Yes, probably um, uh, more at towards the end of the year, beginning of, of next year. Now, the economy is in, is in good shape. Now, there are imbalances starting to appear and there are some sectors that need to be carefully m um, uh, monitored because um, the, the consumption, consumption has been weaker lately and even negative in the last uh, the last numbers that were published and the uh, employment has uh, has decreased too so it's there are some sectors to carefully monitor but now on the other side you have sectors which are really in good shape um, trade has been a good uh, uh, has has picked up again and the construction sector and housing prices are have continued to to increase too so I think it is balanced and um, if the cycle picks up um, uh, even a bit faster than expected, um, uh, we will have uh, inflation pressures building up. And now if we look at Canada and the Canadian dollar, now recent results in terms of employment and housing were quite low. Now I know housing is kind of a concern at the moment. What do you think in terms of growth? What are your concerns and what do you think about the performance of the Canadian dollar? 
uh, Canada is, as far as I'm concerned, a bit in the same position than New Zealand. The economy is is in um, in good health and numbers are good. Well, yes, there are some disappointments on the housing sector, but um, as they will probably be in New Zealand, you can't you can't afford with the current situation where the global economy is is um, stronger than before but still uh, pretty weak you can't have uh, your housing sector uh, booming because that is what creates imbalances so i'm not really concerned about the construction sector i guess for those countries commodity providing countries they are uh, uh, ad they are advanced in the cycle. So yes, it is normal that they have this, this kind of problems. Now I would say for um, Canada, as for New Zealand, uh, what is important is also trade because exports make up to one third of uh, GDP. Uh, now in Canada's case, it's, its main trading partner is the US. So um, as we expect the US to, uh, to accelerate uh, during the year, this will definitely uh, drive Canada with it. Now in terms of exchange, rates, uh, um, the CAD should have a positive momentum. But as for all the other commodity currencies, it will uh, highly depend on the cross, on the cross you're looking at. Because um, if, if indeed the US and Canada have uh, similar expansions in the race, uh, the cross might just trade sideways or, or um, I would say still with some uh, uh, upside potential, appreciation potential for commo commodity currencies. Because if you have the global side picking up and numbers confirm that we are again in acceleration, this will definitely drive uh, uh, commodity prices higher and also probably the US dollar lower on return of risk appetite and which means also that you uh, less need a safe haven. So that will technically uh, push uh, commodity currencies against the US dollar. Now against other crosses will be mo uh, more difficult if you look at the Australian dollar against the euro for instance. Uh, it has a lot if you you look uh, at uh, the bigger trends uh, since uh, what uh, two years, uh, you see that if indeed the Australian dollar has appreciated a lot more against the euro than against the US dollar, and there could be also an unwinding of, of this position uh, happening for all commodity currencies, where the uh, people will play the euro against uh, again after on an, an, a battering of the situation in, in, in Europe. So uh, yeah. Yes, we could see commodity currencies be weaker against the euro and then a bit more positive against the US dollar and on the longer term maybe less since uh, if the US expansion is really better than, than, than Europe, uh, people will probably play uh, uh, growth uh, differentials and um, so there it's a bit more tricky. Now there are plays out there which are probably easier um, uh, against the yen. Now one cannot expect uh, the trend to continue on the yen because it has been fast and, and really uh, uh, impressive numbers in such little time. But on the more longer term, uh, the yen should continue to, uh, to, to weaken again once maybe a correction happens. And um, there will be a very interesting uh, carry trade to, to make, especially for New Zealand, Australia, and even uh, for Canada, for instance, which will probably be in the same uh, position in uh, the RBNZ, well, they will probably need an interest rate increase uh, later in the year, maybe uh, beginning of next year. So I guess uh, carry trade will come back and will push uh, this uh, commodity currencies uh, to uh, a further appreciation, even if it's probably limited since we're nearing uh, the, the end of the commodities boom. And finally, you know, there has been a lot of talk of a currency war breaking out. Um, G20 is happening tomorrow and on Saturday. In terms of concerns for commodity currencies, in terms of um, currency wars and currencies playing against each other, what, you know, what are you thinking? Um, I do not really believe in this currency war uh, or um, or maybe participants have been co-opted in this game. Um, for me, um, uh, what has been going on is that we have had side effects from uh, monetary policies uh, spilling um, uh, onto the exchange rates. It's, it's, a, it's a border effect which is welcomed. But uh, as long as, as exchange rates or the trade market is not directly um, uh, targeted, um, I do not feel it's really uh, currency, competitive currency devaluation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.
Well, viewers, that is it for right now. But John Hancock and Frank Hollenbeck will be in the studio later to go head to head for a debate. But for now, goodbye.